Understanding your league format is going to be incredibly important in determining the order that you want to construct your roster. Now, what I'm going to be making this video for will be a traditional redraft leagues that are going to be full PPR, start one quarterback, two running backs, two wide receivers, a tight end, and one to two flex spots. General rule of thumb, if you're going to be transitioning to a non-PPR league, you're going to want to move running backs up wide receivers down because inherently running backs will be better options in the flex. If you're going to be adding flex positions to your starting lineup or adding starting slots at wide receiver, you're going to want to be moving wide receivers up these rankings and moving down the running backs. So let's go ahead and let's get into this list. Starting off with our number one guy, almost regardless of the format, unless it's super flex, you have to be taking Justin Jefferson at number one. With Jefferson, this is a wide receiver that since the year 2000 post the best season we've ever seen from a 23 year old player. I mean, if we are gonna be filtering down wide receivers at 23 years old by receiving yards per game, the guys after Justin Jefferson include David Boston, Odell Beckham Jr., Chris Godwin, DeAndre Hopkins, Keenan Allen, Randy Moss, Alshon Jeffrey, Anquan Bolden, and then Calvin Johnson. If we're looking at guys to have 100 receiving yards per game or more, there was only one, and that player was Justin Jefferson. With the addition of Addison and Hawkinson fully implemented this season as well, I wouldn't be too surprised if we see the Minnesota Vikings with the second year head coach Kevin O'Connell decide to actually continue to push aggressively towards passing the football, especially considering the departure of Dalvin Cook. And I think it's in the range of outcomes for Kirk Cousins to be a top three quarterback this year in passing yards and the Minnesota Vikings to be a top three offense in the NFL in passing attempts. Now, going over to our next guy, we are going to be looking at Jamar Chase. With Chase, I understand the argument, Burroughs may be better than Cousins, but Chase just isn't as good as Jefferson, okay? Chase is still phenomenal, and there are reasons to be excited. If you're going to go through and look at what we've seen from Jamar Chase with his rookie season and second year, comps going into year three include guys like Justin Jefferson, Duh, Juju Smith-Schuster, Michael Thomas, A.J. Green, Marquise Colston, all of whom obviously have been elite wide receiver ones in fantasy. Now, if we're going to be projecting Chase out, what I'm very excited to see is his target share in this offense. Hovering at about 31% on a per-game basis, I think once we get a full season of a healthy Jamar Chase, he and Justin Jefferson are guys that it wouldn't be the craziest thing in the world to see them sniff almost 2,000 yards receiving. Now, our next guy is going to be Christian McCaffrey. Now, I think you can slide Christian McCaffrey down if you add in starting wide receiver slots or more flex spots into your starting lineup. But assuming that you can only start three to four wide receivers at the maximum, I think you have to have CMC as the running back one at this point. With CMC, he's not the same player he was in 2019. 2019, the man averaged 150 total yards per game, right? Clearly, if we thought he was still that guy, Christian McCaffrey would be number one overall. But with CMC this past season, he had a 21% team target share, which which is phenomenal. I just think that on first and second down as a rusher, Elijah Mitchell is going to be mixed in a little bit. You kind of see this if you're going to go over and look at the player props on underdog, where right now they actually have Elijah Mitchell sitting at 575 and a half rushing yards. Whereas if you're going to be looking at Christian McCaffrey, Christian McCaffrey is not much higher than this. Christian McCaffrey is going to be at 865 and a half rushing yards. So you're seeing that as well as the fact that with Elijah Mitchell this past season, CMC averaged only 10 and a half carries per game, only averaged about 38 and a half rushing yards per game versus the 13 games without Elijah Mitchell. Christian McCaffrey was at 15 and a half carries per game. He was at 75 rushing yards per game. So please understand CMC is not the player he once was. He is not going to be seeing 400 touches this next season, but even if Elijah Mitchell has a role in this offense, based on his receiving down skill set, he can still easily be the running back one in fantasy. And of course, if you want to check out any of those player props on Underdog Fantasy, or if you want to get into a draft with us, which we are doing literally every single day on the live stream, not missing a day until 2024, you can find the link to Underdog in the comment section or the description of this video. On Underdog Fantasy, those are going to be best ball drafts, so no time commitment at all during the year. That's how I drafted 700 teams and won $150,000 on Underdog. If you sign up with promo code FLOCK, you're going to get a 100% deposit bonus. 
you're going to get our 2023 fantasy football rankings as well as a free trial to flogfantasy.com available in damn near every state you can see the map here but going over to our next guy we are going to have travis kelsey now, like I said, if you add in wide receiver starting slots to your requirements, move the wide receivers up. But if you are sitting here with the shallow lineup and Kelsey can go out there and clearly be the tight end one in fantasy, he is just legitimately a cheat code, especially in your ESPN drafts where you're able to find some solid values like Calvin Ridley in round six, like Chris Olave in round four. In those regular redraft leagues, I mean, if you can find those middle round wide receiver values, it just makes sense to grab the elite level tight end production, lock that in and take advantage of those values at wide receiver later on now our next guy will be Tyreek Hill with Tyreek Hill the man had more receiving yards on a per game basis this past season than he ever did in Kansas City I know it doesn't sound believable I know it sounds crazy I mean everybody including myself was worried about Tyreek Hill going over to Miami and what that was going to do for his fantasy production but I mean, it's better than ever, ladies and gentlemen, and it could be even better this next year than it just was, because if we look at the splits with and without Tua, Tyree Kill with Tua averaged 21 fantasy points per game. Tyree Kill in games that Tua did not play this past year was sitting down there at 15 and a half points per game. So it's crazy to say that Tyree Kill could be even better than he was a year ago, but a healthy Tua equals Tyree Kill possibly as a top three wide receiver in fantasy. Now, going over to our next guy, Cooper Cup. The man had a 34% team target share this past season. It is laughable to see that. Obviously, this was the triple crown winner in 2021, leading the NFL in receiving yards, receptions, as well as receiving touchdowns. Now, Cup is 30, but more importantly, what I'm a little bit worried about is just how Las Vegas sportsbooks are telling us that this is probably going to be a pretty bad Los Angeles Rams offense. They have the Rams sitting at six and a half wins. And for that reason, I'm going to have Cup a little bit lower than other people. Now, going over to our next guy, we are going to have Austin Eckler. With Eckler, I think that there are reasons to be concerned. First being is Eckler is older than he's ever been. Obviously, that's the same for all these players. But with Austin Eckler in particular, it's going to be a little more concerning given the just natural progression you have from running backs at this age. Now, before we get into the historical comps, I also want to talk about the other red flag that you're going to have regarding his involvement as a pass catcher, possibly going down based off the personnel that this Los Angeles Chargers team has this next season. If you go over and look at Austin Eckler, the reason he was the number one overall running back last year is because the man had a 17, almost 18% team target share. He was averaging about seven and a half targets per game, and that's able to fuel a phenomenal finish. But what we have to be a little bit worried about is the fact that this receiving down volume was almost entirely fueled based off the injuries to Keenan Allen as well as Mike Williams. You don't hear this being talked about a lot, but it's pretty damn important because if you look at Austin Eckler's games played with and without Keenan Allen, you actually have Austin Eckler averaging 9.3 targets per game without Keenan Allen. You have Eckler only averaging 6.2 targets per game with Keenan Allen. If you're looking at the same thing with Mike Williams, you have the departure of Mike Williams in this offense, leading to Austin Eckler averaging 10 and a half targets per game in those contests. Whereas with Mike Williams, he's sitting there at six and a half. So I do think that's one red flag. And also what we did is we added over to the road of his screener and we dove a little bit deeper into running backs at this age that comped historically to Austin Eckler based off this past season. And we try to figure out on average, what do they do the following year? So if we look at this list, Curtis Martin in the year 2000 going to 2001, I mean, averages 19.1 fantasy points per game, and that ends up going down to 18.8. You had David Johnson, 2018 to 2019, averaging 15.7 points per game, that going down to 12. You have Deuce Staley, 16.1 points per game, that goes down to 10. You had Lamont Jordan, 21 points per game, down to eight. You had Liddell Betts, going from 15 points per game down to five. So historically speaking, you need to be worried about a running back when he is this age. Also, I think the receiving down involvement goes down with the healthy Keenan, a healthy Mike Williams, and the addition of Quentin Johnston. But still, clearly, he's a very good player, right? I mean, there's a reason we're ranking him in round one. There's a reason he's our running back two. I just want to explain why he's not our running back one after being so a year ago. 
Now, going over to our next guy, Bijan Robinson is a running back that I am incredibly biased with, okay? With Bijan Robinson, I understand the last time a rookie running back was ranked here was Clyde Edwards Alaire, and that did not work out for anybody. But Bijan Robinson is a significantly better prospect than Clyde Edwards Alaire was. If we're going to look at our running back prospect model since the year 2014, the only running backs to score as high as Bijan included Leonard Fournette as well as Saquon Barkley. So it's a completely different type of prospect. Another thing I want to look at is the fact that we've seen rookie running backs go out there and actually have a lot of production. Before Clyde Rizalaire was the last running back to go around one, you had Ezekiel Elliott there as well. And Ezekiel Elliott, as a rookie, went ahead and he had 322 attempts in 15 games. He had 108 rushing yards per game. We've seen rookies in the past. I mean, Barkley was the running back two in his season. Fournette, the RB7. Zeke, the running back three. Adrian Peterson, the running back five. Bijan Robinson is this level of a prospect. He's going to an Arthur Smith offense that we've seen time and time again try to lead the NFL in carries, where Tennessee did in 2020. They were number two in the NFL. And Atlanta this past season was also second in the NFL in carries as well. And they did so with freaking Cordell Patterson and Tyler Algier. Year. So it's a phenomenal situation. He's a phenomenal prospect. Hell, I went to the University of Texas. I interviewed him at the NFL draft. I ran into him at the gym a couple weeks back. So I am very biased. You probably want to ignore me here. Hook him horns. Now going over to our next guy, we're going to have Stefan Diggs. Not a lot to talk about. Three straight seasons as a top 10 wide receiver. Over the past three years, the man's averaged a 27% team target share. The man's averaged 110 air yards per game. The man's averaged 2.4 yards per route run. Stefan Diggs is an elite wide receiver in his prime with Josh Allen. Now, I don't know if he has the same ceiling as Jefferson, Cup, Chase, Tyreek, but still, nonetheless, the floor is incredible. Now, going over to our next guy, CeeDee Lamb is a wide receiver that I expect to continue to get better, and the man's been great. I mean, if we look at the last two seasons at his age and put it in the road of his screener for the trajectory of his career, the only other guys are Justin Jefferson, Mike Evans, Odell Beckham Jr., and DeAndre Hopkins. Yes, that is how good C.D. Lamb was. C.D. Lamb was the wide receiver seven this past season. This can be higher even if Lamb doesn't continue to improve, which he probably will. The man's younger than Kenny Pickett. I mean, in the 12 games played with Dak Prescott last season, he averaged 18 and a half points per game. The five games played without Dak Prescott, he was down at 16 and a half points per game. So if you get a healthy Dak, Lamb naturally, with how young he is, probably going to keep getting better. Should be super excited. Now, our next guy, we are going to have A.J. Brown. With Brown, there are really no red flags, right? I, I mean, you can pretty much pencil him in to be a wide receiver one. He's still incredibly young. He's in an elite level offense. He was the wide receiver eight this past year with his first season in Philadelphia. There's not a lot to talk about. Now, our next few guys, I think, maybe have a higher ceiling for your team. I just don't necessarily know if we can be as guaranteed about the production. Jonathan Taylor is a running back that I cannot stop drafting. If you are looking at Jonathan Taylor in these underdog drafts, right now, JT is going in the middle of the second round. There's a reason for this. We'll get to it in a second. But if we look at his player prop projection, underdog has Jonathan Taylor currently sitting at eight and a half rushing touchdowns, 1,200 rushing yards. The only other running back that they have for this many rushing yards is Derrick Henry. And keep in mind, Jonathan Taylor is a capable pass catcher. Jonathan Taylor actually averaged a 10% team target share mark this past season. His market share numbers have only improved over the past three years. Really, you just saw the decline this past season based off the offense being very bad, as well as the fact that the man was injured. Now, the offense still easily can be very bad this next season. I'm not sitting here saying Anthony Richardson's a for sure thing. I'm not sitting here saying Anthony Richardson is going to have this team as a playoff team, but I don't necessarily think they're guaranteed to be a bottom five team in the NFL again like they were a year ago. I think Jonathan Taylor is healthy. The man's still on his rookie contract, still incredibly young. You don't have to worry about his age. And we've done the historical research. And what you want to find with the league winning running back is you want to look at those backs that have the market share numbers over 50% from a carry perspective and over a 10% from a team target share perspective, still under 26 years old. Jonathan Taylor checks all those boxes. He looks like he can be a league winner. Now our next guy, Saquon Barkley, does as well. Now with Barkley, it is all about his availability this next season. If you wanted to play it safe, I am not even going to fault you for having our next guy, Nick Chubb, ahead of Barkley. And I'll say if you're playing in a non-PPR format, 
100%, you need to move Nick Chubb higher than this. I mean, Chubb gives you the floor, right? Nick Chubb for three straight seasons, over 100 total yards per game. Nick Chubb should be better as a pass catcher this next year. As you're looking over the past four seasons with and without Kareem Hunt, Nick Chubb has averaged almost three targets per game without Hunt, and he's averaged two targets per game with Hunt. So we can naturally assume that his receiving down skill set is going to be more utilized with no Kareem Hunt in this offense this next season. But the reason I will have Saquon Barkley ahead of Nick Chubb is I do think that Saquon Barkley plays this next year. We are making these rankings for a full PPR format. And if you are really, really concerned that Barkley does not play this next season, hell, you could always head over to Underdog where they still have the Saquon Barkley line up there at 975 and a half rushing yards. If Barkley were to miss, obviously Underdog's bleeding money on that line. Now, our next player will be Tony Pollard. Tony Pollard on paper looks like a league winner. I'm not going to lie to you. Tony Pollard is a running back that terrifies me this next season because I really have not drafted him at all at his cost. And he was the running back nine last season with Ezekiel Elliott. Now with the departure of Ezekiel Elliott, there are so many touches available in this offense that I think you naturally assume that, I mean, it's hard for Tony Pollard not to be a hit in fantasy football. I just have a gross feeling. And this is something you should probably just ignore. And this is something that I need to deal with. I probably need to get over. But with two of these running backs, we'll talk about the next guy later on. I'm a little bit worried about their team bringing in another back. Whether that's going to be Leonard Fournette, Kareem Hunt, Ezekiel Elliott, Dalvin Cook. There are still sharks out there in the water. And I think in Dallas, you may have one of those veterans signing and taking over that Ezekiel Elliott role from last season. Now, our next guy will be Derek Henry. If it was a non-PBR format, obviously you move Derrick Henry higher than this. And I think Henry should be more exciting now that you have the addition of DeAndre Hopkins, considering the fact that with Derrick Henry, one of the red flags he has is a little bit lessened. Because the two red flags are, one, this Tennessee Titans offense may just be horrendous. It's a possibility the Tennessee Titans are a bottom five team in the NFL this next year. If you're looking at their win total, according to Las Vegas Sportsbooks, right now, the under at seven and a half games is minus 120. So they're telling us this is going to be a bad team. And generally, you don't want a running back that's just going to be a first and second down option on a bad team. Now, with that being said, DeAndre Hopkins coming in solves that issue a bit, right? Hopkins coming in makes it where there should be more sustained drives for this offense. There should be more trips to the red zone. There should be more touchdown opportunities overall. And that should make you more excited about Derrick Henry. Now, the other red flag is the H. If you're going to look historically with Derrick Henry at this prototype, the other running backs that look the same at the same age, you had Arian Foster who fell from 21.4 points per game down to 19.8. You had LaShawn McCoy going from about 20 points per game down to about 16 and a half. You had Curtis Martin going from about 19 points per game down to 15. You had Marshawn Lynch going from about 19 points per game down to 12. And you had DeMarco Murray going from about 18 and a half points per game down to 11 and a half. So every single one of these running backs at the age Derrick Henry is got worse going into this next year. I expect the same thing with Derrick Henry because we know age comes for these RBs, but you can't just write him off because at the end of the day, he is Derrick Henry. Now, Garrett Wilson, our next guy, Garrett Wilson, phenomenal rookie, great prospect out of Ohio State. I mean, if you're going to be looking at the quarterback upgrade you're getting this next season, should be massive. Because if you're looking at how bad Zach Wilson was this next season, probably going to laugh. I mean, Garrett Wilson only averaged 8.8 fantasy points per game in games where Zach Wilson played, whereas he averaged about 17.5 points per game in games where you did not have Zach Wilson. And that was Mike White. That was Joe Flacco. Now you have Aaron Rodgers. So you should be much, much more excited. Amon Ross St. Brown, our next guy, not a lot to talk about, right? St. Brown is great. He was the wide receiver 10 as a second-year player. Not too worried about Jamison Williams. I think Jamison Williams may actually benefit Amon Ross St. Brown because Jamison's that field-stretching wide receiver. Jamison's not going to take a lot of volume, but Jamison Williams may keep two safeties back, may keep three players back, and may end up just creating more space underneath for Amon Ross St. Brown. Now, our next guy is Ramadre Stevenson, and with Ramadre, very similar to Tony Pollard. This is a running back that I may end up getting forced to move up our rankings. The reason I have Ramadre Stevenson down here is I have a gross feeling 
in the back of my head. I, I, I have that feeling that you may end up seeing another running back go to New England, whether that's Dalvin, Fournette, Hunt, Zeke, I don't know. But I think one of those guys could go there, and I think they could take the goal line role for the Patriots. Now, our last guy on this list will be Josh Jacobs. If I was going to be worried about a running back holding out here, I would probably be a little bit more worried about Jacobs than I would be Barkley. Reason being is, one, Josh Jacobs just led the NFL in rushing. I think he has a strong argument. Two, Josh Jacobs is young as hell. I understand that Josh Jacobs drafted in 2019. You would assume that Josh Jacobs isn't that young. But no, Josh Jacobs is only 25 years old. And he just turned 25 in February. Like If you're going to be looking at Josh Jacobs versus Najee Harris, Najee Harris is about one month older than Josh Jacobs. Like Jacobs can kind of afford to sit out a year if he really wanted to, if he really wanted to see what kind of leverage he could have. Y'all know he was my most drafted player last year. That's how we won 150,000 on underdog or one of the reasons we won 150,000 on underdog. I really want to root for a guy. I really want to see him play in this next year, but also it's going to be a bad situation even if he does play right. But it should be it for this video. Of course, we're going to go deeper with these lists later on. But of course, if you have not done so already, go down there, drop a like, subscribe to the channel if you play fantasy football. If you want to hop into a fantasy football draft with us, Today, tomorrow, the next day, the next day, we're doing it every single day until 2024. You can find the link to Underdog Fantasy in the description, in the comment section. That's also where all those player props are going to be. If you sign up with promo code FLOCK, they're going to match your first deposit dollar for dollar up to 100. Plus, you're going to get our 2023 fantasy football rankings and a free trial to FLOCKFANTASY.com. But I think that's all I have for you. Again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Really appreciate you. And really hope I get to draft with you on a live stream later today.